Um, good afternoon all my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. I wanted to make another video for you. I hope the quality of the video is better than past videos. Now I've got on my screen recorder, I can only record one tab on my computer, but I've got it only for the sound that I make. I don't have it for the sound that the computer makes. So hopefully the quality will be better. And you can hear it better because I I noticed that the sound was really poor and it was because I had it on the sound that the computer makes as well. So um, hope we'll discuss. Now what I have done is I've been studying on time series forecasting and I've been studying multivariate time series forecasting. But I have done a multivariate time series forecasting, but it was quite unusual because it was the analytics Vidhaya question and it was a hackathon where it was their Janetta hack where it says time series forecasting. Now I made the program, I opened the GitHub repository so you can see that my GitHub, I'm Tracy Renee 61 on GitHub. Now so I stored the files in GitHub and I wrote the program and then I stored the program on GitHub. But because I'm using Chromebook, there's actually a problem with the Chrome where I can't get the file to actually come up on GitHub. So I'm using something called NB Viewer. So you can get this file on GitHub if you want to type it in or if for some reason you're using a Chromebook and you can't get the file on GitHub, you can go to this computer program called NB Viewer, which I'm on, and you can type in the URL and press go. And that should take you to the program. Well, I did before. I don't know what the problem is. So now my computer is just being awkward because what I wanted to do, I wanted to, oh, here it is. Finally, we got it. So if you type it in, if you type in the URL into that little enter entry box, and uh, then you'll get your program will come up. And all this does is this just allows you to view the notebook. So that's what we're doing right now. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the problem statement of this genetic geneta hack competition question and it's a time series uh, it's a time series analysis but I used a different method to analyze the time series so the problem statement is company of electroglycia supplies electricity to the city it is looking to optimize its electricity production based on the historical electricity consumption of the people of Electrovania. The company has hired you as a data science to investigate the past consumption and the weather information to come up with a model that catches the trend as accurately as possible. You have bear in mind that there are many factors that affect electricity consumption and not all can be measured. Electrodicia has provided you this data on hourly data spanning five years. For this consumption, the training set is comprised of the first 23 days of each month and the test set is the 24th to the end of the month where the public leaderboard is based on the first two days of the test whereas the private leaderboard considers the rest of the days. Your task is to predict the electricity consumption on our basis. Now this was done, it's a multivariate time series analysis but I'm still you know new to machine learning and 
because like the first three weeks in the training set and then the final week is in the test set, I wasn't sure exactly what to do. And as I don't have a mentor, I decided that I would use Random Forest because I'd read on Jason Brownlee's site and on other blog posts that you can use Random Forest for time series analysis. So that's what I've decided to do. I decided to use Random Forest. The first thing I did was import my libraries. And after I imported my libraries, I loaded and read my files. So you can see that the files that you need are on my GitHub account. So you don't have to download them from Analytics Fit Higher if you don't want to. I looked at the train set. I looked at the test set. And I looked at the sample. What we did was we checked for any null characters, null values, and fortunately, there are not any null values that need to be imputed. So what we did is we have to convert the date, time to year, month, day, and time. Because um, I had read that in order to use a random forest for time series analysis, you have to make it supervised training. and um, you know, I'm not sure. I'm still new. I'm still learning. I'm not sure exactly what to do. But I decided the best way to do this was to break down the date time into segments. And then each segment we trained on. So the first thing we did was we trained on our year. So we had to take the year out of the date time. So you can see we've got our year. The next thing thing we did was we trained on our month so we had to take the month out of the date time so now you see we've got our month the next thing we had to do was we had to take the day out of the date time so now you see we've got our, our date and then the next thing we had to do was we had to take the time out of the date time and so now you see we've got our time now what we do is we have to ordinal encode one of the columns because one of the columns is an object. And you cannot have any object files when you are uh, fitting and uh, predicting upon data. So we ordinal encoded the ver2 column to make it numbers. And now what we have to do is these columns that we had made year, month, day, time from our day time, we have to convert those to integers. And then what we have to do is we have to define our x and y values. So id equals test id. And the reason why we have to take the I, this, define this variable ID is because we're going to be dropping ID. So ID equals test ID, Y equals train electricity consumption values, X equals train drop ID, date time, electricity consumption, axis equals 1, in place equals false. X test equals test drop, ID date time, axis equals one, in place equals four. And what we do is we split our training data set up. We split our data set up for training and testing. So X train, X val, Y train, Y val equals train test split, X, Y test equals 10%, random state equals 1, and I tested the shapes of all of these values to include X test. Now what we did was add a pipeline because uh, pipelines are more efficient because we were going to use the standard scalar and if I didn't use the pipeline or then I would if I didn't use the pipeline then I would have to use the standard scalar fit it on X train and then transform it on X train of X file and X test but you didn't have to do that with pipeline pipeline does that for you already so model equals make pipeline, standard scalar, random 
random forest regressor, n estimators equals 1,000, random state equals 1, fit x train y train, says print model score x train y train, we've got 0.44%, which is not too bad. So now we make our prediction on the validation set. And we've got a 74.18% when we predicted on the validation set. We tested our root mean squared error, and we have a 56.73. And then we created a data frame so you can compare the actual values against the predicted values or the predicted values against the actual values. So what I did now is I made a little chart. So you can look at the chart and you can see how the uh, predicted values compare to the actual values. Now what we're going to do is we're going to predict on the X on the test set, predict model, predict X test. And then what I did was I had to delete this and I couldn't delete it, but I had to put the sample in there just so I could see what the submission file needs to be. And so submission equals PD data frame, ID, ID, electricity consumption, prediction, and prediction. And that's what analytics did high at once see and so we had to take our data frame and we have to convert it to a csv file and then you have a, so that's pd data frame submission to csv submission.csv index equals false and then it's print your submission has been saved so our submission that i wrote and when i put it on the uh, and 